So welcome again. Uh, I'm Matt Robinson, again, Ross Industrial Consortium of America's Program Manager, uh, and welcome to the December uh, 2020 com uh, community meeting. For an agenda today, um, we have a number of different folks uh, sharing kind of what's going on in their teams or organizations. Um, starting with uh, Human Inclusive Robotics, uh, Lou Amadio will be sharing a little bit of the work going on within his team over uh, at Microsoft. Um, and really exciting development recently um, out of Tormach, a ros based open industrial manipulator. Um, Daniel Rogi will be sharing a little bit like from the machine itself uh, in Milwaukee. Um, he's with Tormach, he's the CEO of Tormach and he's gonna be sharing some of their latest work. If you, some of you may recall Daniel presented on um, taking HAL uh, and separating it from machine kit uh, and creating a ROS package, right? And so this work stems from that early work. Um, Max Falcone of PushCorp is going to be sharing some of the latest developments for surface finishing applications out of PushCorp. Um, so they've got some, some new developments going on. They're going to be able to like check a lot of the boxes or add capability to kind of the things that we've been talking about in the scan and plan family relative to surface finishing. So excited to have Max and Eddie share some of that, that work today. And then uh, Jeremy Adams uh, with Object Computing was hoping to share his thoughts and some recent brainstorming they've been doing in object computing uh, to address some of the issues we have in ROS2 relative to hardware interfaces. So, you know, um, some of you may be aware um, that we've been doing a lot of work in, in um, ROS2, but there are some limitations relative to uh, how we actually interface with the hardware. So uh, this particular, <clears throat> this particular um, discussion seeks it like, hey, you know, we can really accelerate um, manipulator interfaces, robotic interfaces in particular, if we had a, a standard uh, approach. <clears throat> so hopefully uh, Jeremy will be able to kind of share his latest thoughts on that one. So let's get into it. Um, I just want to kind of highlight a couple of upcoming events. Uh, so the Ross Industrial Conference, I touched on it a couple questions kind of before we formally started the meeting. Uh, around the video competition, but the Ross Industrial Conference 2020, organized by our friends over in uh, Fraunhofer IPA that steward the Ross Industrial Consortium in the European Union. Their event is December 15th through 16th. Uh, the information can be found at rossindustrial.org under events. Um, there is a registration and a, and a registration fee, but there is a discount for members. So if you are a member and interested in registering, uh, let me know if you do not have the the kind of member pass, um, but obviously it's open to everybody, but there is um, a, a nominal fee associated with their event. Uh, one interesting aspect is the video competition. So um, there was recently a vote for the video submitted uh, relative to the video competition. Um, so that'll be interesting to see kind of what comes out for that. There was some uh, prize associated, one that was highlighting an industrial application and one of the competitions was uh, cloud oriented and focused. So it was really interesting. We look forward to seeing how that comes out. So stay tuned. Uh, Ross Industrial Training America. So we will be actually over on rossindustrial.org. All of our training for 2021 is published. Currently right now, um, February 23rd to 25th is kind of the one we're really making the big push for. We're upgrading all the training to Ross2 Foxy and to make it a little bit more of a complete Ross2 experience. Um, for those of you who have attended the recent Ross Industrial trainings that have both A, been a lot of changes, right? Our first ever virtual trainings, our first trainings on the EC2, uh, AWS instance, uh, as well as Ross2 content. Um, you know, obviously we hear your feedback. There were some things that were still a little clunky um, as we're migrating pieces and the exercises. Um, but we hope by February 23rd, the goal is to have a little bit more complete experience with both Foxy um, being over on ROS2 Foxy, because before we were in dashing, and then also having a little bit more complete exercises leveraging Move It 2. So stay tuned for that, uh, as well as getting a couple more of the complete exercises fully ported over, right? So we're looking forward to kind of getting all that going. Um, ROS Industrial Consortium of America's annual meeting. Uh, I originally had the date in here, but on Friday, uh, it came out that Automate was being pushed to 2021, the in-person event. Uh, or sorry, 2022, um, and the 2021 Automate is going virtual and being pushed to June. So we will be coming up with a new plan for our annual Americas sort of, if you will, conference. We call it annual meeting um, to be determined. Uh, date and 
obviously it looks like it'll have to be virtual because we do try to keep it in the front part of the year. Uh, so more information will be coming. We, we hope to uh, take a little bit of the best of the different events we've seen uh, and, and try to create something that's not necessarily having people sit in front of a computer all day uh, and potentially a little bit more interactive. So stay tuned, we're gonna brainstorm on this uh, and we'll get back back to the, the community on, on how, how this comes together. <clears throat> so one of the things I wanted to recently talk about, I mean, for those of you who are maybe all over the social media or dive in deep on the newsletters that I send, you may have already heard about this, um, but we are really excited about this opportunity uh, here in the US. Um, there's the Advanced Robotics from Manufacturing Institute. It's a DOD sort of kind of like uh, facilitating tech transfer, um, <clears throat> tech transfer, uh, curating capabilities from tier L4 to at least six. They like to see it get a little bit beyond. Um, obviously, we brought to the table in this team a bunch of the prior work we've done in Ross Industrial focused technical projects around scan and plan. But we took another step here um, and actually built the full application in Ross too. And then we had agreements with the ARM Institute to fully open source it. So you'll see the, the repo is here um, because we thought it'd be a good opportunity to see like, hey, what would, the, what would it look like to build a full ROS2 application you know, as a reference? Like, hey, this is how we went about building it uh, for an industrial application and, and then offer it up for the community, review, potential leverage, feedback, et cetera, right? What worked, what didn't? Um, obviously, the, um, there's a real more detailed write-up over in rossindustrial.org at the blog. But it also, we added a couple different, we leveraged some of the FCI research um, compliance controllers. So there's some, some content there in reference to their work in implementing the ability, because this, this application was using a collaborative robot, the UR10E specifically, there was interest in having humans basically give annotations on the part and have the system execute those trajectories within the annotated closed loop boundaries. Uh, so there's an implementation of that, uh, and that's referenced in the write-up and another blog post coming soon on that piece. But there's a full demonstration video that was uh, put out by Spirit Aerosystems. They were the prime for the project, so feel free to check that out. Um, this presentation will be up on the event page soon, so if you're not, you know, you don't have to feverishly jot this down, uh, we'll make it video or make it available. Um, and, and of course, it, you can see this again in the recording of the presentation. And like I said, there's a blog post about this project specifically as well. <clears throat> the other thing is I just wanted to highlight a couple of the recent uh, advancements um, that, that have been out there. We'd love to get some feedback on. And one is the real-time path planning, right? So there's been a lot of interest in furthering the capability uh, of ROS-based systems. And one thing is, is this idea of, of like, okay, I, I, I plan free space motion. Hey, I'm about to execute it. Oh, wait something is entering in the environment, what do I do? Unfortunately, my, my graphic has, has stopped. But essentially, um, this simulates uh, in our viz, the entrance of a, of a, of a body. It, it could be, in this case, you may think of a person, it's kind of oscillating in and out, and you see kind of, a, of, of the system sort of replanning its trajectory and modifying it, yet keeping all of it really smooth, right? So it's still leveraging the optimization-based trajectory um, uh, to avoid this, right? So this is a really interesting new capability um, and, and we're really excited about this, I the idea of dynamic optimization. But Levi, I've got you on the line. Do you want to say a few words about this work? <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so one of the major enabling piece uh, for the real-time piece is uh, as part of an internal research development where you developed a uh, GPU-enabled in collision checking. Uh, it allows us to do collision checking at about 500 to 1,000 hertz uh, for this, which allows us to quickly update the optimization. So that was one of the major contributing factors to, to achieving this uh, dynamic optimization. Thanks, Levi. And then also, Levi, I guess I'll turn it over to you for kind of the testing we're doing with the SNAP package. Yeah, so we were looking at uh, different ways or, or different softwares. Uh, in the past, we presented on creating like a ROS workbench or um, a tool for enabling uh, uh, GUI to generate ROS components, things like that. 
so we wanted to explore. We were looking at pre-CAD, uh, ignition, uh, and also OEM products. So we decided to take a uh, shot at uh, leveraging some of the newest capabilities out of ignition robotics to see um, how easy it was to use and how quickly we could put something together. Um, so we, we started with just a simple setup wizard uh, using their open source product. So we were able to, to create like a setup wizard similar to the, the Move It setup wizard using the Ignition uh, uh, software package. Uh, one thing we like about it, it's built off of uh, QML, which allows us to not only uh, use it as a desktop application, but it can work on touch screens. So you could create uh, similar things to HMI screens. Uh, so it allows us to use uh, same widgets that we would use for like Arviz uh, for creating industrial style HMI. Uh, then uh, the next step was to look at different options for deployment. So we looked at several different ways. Uh, one of the ones we settled on was exploring Snap packages on the Linux side. Um, it's more or less it's just a self-contained package. It kind of zips up all the dependencies uh, you install. It. The nice thing is, is it more or less just works once you get it working. Uh, it doesn't require you to install any other dependencies usually on your host machine. So you can kind of just download it and things work. Um, so it is out there available to test. Uh, we plan to investigate using MSIX on the Windows side. Uh, it provides a very similar uh, packaging mechanism uh, for Windows for deploying these types of systems. Thanks, Levi. And, and I guess like, you know, the motivation is, is for those of you that have participated in the consortium side of things, when we collect consortium member feedback around the roadmap and hey, what are what are sort of the things you need to be successful or, or what are the challenges you're running into? When we work with end user organizations that don't necessarily have a deep software savvy development team, um, you know, they struggle sometimes with the peculiarities of building out these applications, getting them to run. Um, we're running into this with the A5 project significantly as different people are trying to get it to build on different configurations. Um, so this is this is seeking out ways to this notion of grab and go, um, where, where people can can get like bits of capability um, and, and, and do something like get started, right? Without necessarily having to do all the machinations of, of getting their Linux configuration all dialed in, right? So that's, that's there's been some, we've had other groups too, uh, some startups express interest like, well, let us know how this goes. Like, right, this is something we've kicked the tires on too and we need to field deploy. Um, so we're really excited. Uh, we had a lot of great support, both from obviously the folks at Open Robotics on the ignition side um, for the visualization component. And of course, obviously the folks at uh, Canonical Ubuntu for helping us get familiar with the, the Snap Store. So thanks to those partners. <clears throat> so anyways, thanks to our speakers. I'm about to pass the mic, if you will. Um, so, so Lou, if you were about ready, I know uh, you, you were keeping the microphone on quiet mode. Um, if you're ready, I'm happy to uh, halt screen sharing and, and pass you the puck, so to speak. <laughs> 